we'll hope maybe it'll open as we're speaking. But uh, pricing at 21, uh, closer to the bottom of the range than the top, even though we know that the market's been salivating for everything regarding cloud services. Any reason why you think enthusiasm might not be as acute today? Well, look, um, you know, we're very pleased with how the IPO process has gone. You know, keep in mind the enterprise value of our company has appreciated from $4.3 billion the last time we were public to $7.6 billion today. Um, so we're pleased with that. You know, this is one of the largest tech IPOs in the year. And the market, um, as you mentioned, the market fundamentals are fantastic. Um, and, uh, you know, right in the middle of this tectonic shift in the industry to multi-cloud, we're the leading pure play multi-cloud solutions company, the cloud experts. So we're really excited actually about the future. How are you going to balance uh, sort of investor interest and in how you leverage uh, that huge tailwind, as you point out, but also uh, start to chip away at some of the debt? Yeah, look, um, in terms of, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the momentum that we've got, we've got tremendous momentum uh, in our sales performance. This past quarter, our sales bookings grew 107% year over year. We're a very profitable company with, uh, with terrific cash flow. You know, in terms of the debt, um, you know, we under, underwent an LBO in late 2016. You know, leverage is not a concern for us whatsoever. You know, our company actually has 95% recurring revenue, very strong free cash flow generation. So, you know, we can operate this business with a comfortable level of leverage over the long term. Now, what we will do is we're going to use some amount of the IPO proceeds to deleverage the company. Over the long term, you can kind of think about uh, us maintaining net leverage levels in the three to four times area with the ability to flex up and down depending upon opportunities in the market. Kevin, you mentioned that, you know, the end markets uh, are thriving right now and it seems like uh, a very hot area of tech. But what has changed, uh, I guess, during the time you've been private now that you're public again in terms of the competitive set and in terms of uh, those you're going to be going up against as you have, you know, this slightly different financial profile? Yeah, look, great question. Um, um, and you're exactly right. The, the market's hot. And Rackspace Technology is a completely transformed company. You know, before the take private in 2016, we actually competed with AWS and hyperscalers. Um, today, we do not compete with them. AWS, Microsoft, and Google are actually our strongest partners. Uh, we've also done four acquisitions uh, since the go private that have really revolutionized all the solutions we offer. So, so now... You know, we're the leading pure play multi-cloud solutions company. We've got 120,000 customers in 120 countries and fantastic momentum for the future. Kevin, Julia Borston here. A question for you about your customers and their plans to do remote work um, as the coronavirus, um, as, as we start to find a, you know, solutions to the coronavirus. How many of those customers do you expect to be in an all remote uh, solution, whereas sort of some will be half and half. And what does that mean for your business and the services you're offering to, to them? Yeah, hi, Julia, G great question. So, you know, for, for our business, the pandemic has really, you know, accelerated uh, years of digital transformation and kind of made it clear to customers that, you know, having a, a multi-cloud strategy is no longer a nice to have. So. What we've seen from customers um, during the pandemic is an urgent need for them to save money. Multi-cloud does that. Customers want to scale up and scale down their business volumes. And also customers want to pivot to new business models, right? A lot of the old business models don't work, as you mentioned, in remote working. Um, and then multi-cloud is, is fantastic for that. So, you know, we're seeing 75% of businesses today having, um, you know, predominant um, kind of remote working um, and, uh, you know, uh, going forward into the future, we expect that uh, to, uh, to continue to accelerate, which is, you know, great for our business.